Austin Forkner, welcome to the swimming pool. Hey everybody, Walty Wanders, buckle up, strap in. We got a hard hitting pull no punches, no sugarcoating it, no rainbows, no sunshine. I'm just going to give it to you and give it to you straight. We got a good one to unpackage today. Welcome to the show. Hope everybody's doing great. So Austin Forkner, welcome to the sw swimming pool. Today we're going to read between the lines and look between the ruts. Listen, friends, welcome to the show. If you're new, get subscribed, jump on board. This is something you're not going to find on lamestream moto media we're going to tackle some of the topics that other people cannot cannot touch and this is one of those topics friends i mean let's just cut to the chase austin forkner just scored and let me repeat he didn't get he scored a three-year deal with triumph now listen he's spent pretty much his whole career in fact his whole career with Pro Circuit Kawasaki, they offered him the one-year deal to come back. He took the three. He went with the he he went with the money, and you got to understand, friends. This is almost a money grab because you see, you're on an unproven bike. You're going to race with Ricky pretty much as the puppet master of that team. If he wants you gone, you're gone, right, Evan Ferry? You're gone, right, Joey Savacci? That's the way this thing works. And here's the challenge. This is a good one. In fact, like I said, if you're new, get subscribed, jump into the comments. We did some polling. We're going to jump over and hear from you guys here in a second. Is what's the odds that Austin Forkner even finishes one season for, for Triumph, much less three? I mean, here's the challenge. Like Jordan Smith, like I could see that guy maybe with the, I'm not sure what his deal was, but I'd maybe give him a three-year deal. That guy's kind of rock solid. He's probably not going to. He's not going to be as flashy. He doesn't come with as much hype or pedigree maybe as Forkner. But Forkner's had a rough go of it, man. A rough go of it. He's no. He's parted way with, uh, with Ryan Hughes. And I have history with Ryan Hughes. He's in my phone right now. I got the dude's number. I remember sponsoring one rider who went through his program. And I talked to Ryan Hughes back in the day. Back in the day. When I was pumping out a lot of clothing, a lot of co-branded uh, clothing, Motostar with Rock River, all these different companies we did a lot of co-branding with and, and Rhino Power, uh, we tried to get something going with him. And I talked to Ryan. He was a great guy. I, I mean, how can you not like Rhino? He's different. The dude's like, he's eccentric. He's... Check it out, Walty. This is how I'm doing it now. I've gone full moto yogi. You can too, man. Different. And see, so of course he's going to, he's going to come with a certain amount of people that he doesn't resonate with. I mean, the dude does not resonate with many people, but the reality is this, him and Forkner have now parted ways and Forkner's now going to be riding this triumph coming off of a horrific, a horrific season and a massive, massive head injury. I mean, this is gnarly. The, the dude really should hang it up. Why wouldn't you hang it up? Well, I'll tell you why you don't hang it up. Because you got Triumph to offer you a three-year deal. A three-year payday. Now, that contract's probably got so many loopholes in it. I don't know if it's not. I doubt it's three years guaranteed money. Because if you're, if you're hiring Forkner and you're looking at his track record, this dude gets hurt. He gets hurt. What's the chances? What's the percentage of likelihood this dude finishes one season? Much less three. Now, let's, let's, let's make no mistake about this, friends. Cheering for Forkner. Everybody loves a comeback story. Everybody loves a Cinderella story. And speaking of Cinderella story, he's got one. His chick is mad hot. And they've got a bun in the oven as well. If I'm, well, I don't even want to say it. His chick is probably like, dude, can you just go back to college and get a degree in something? Maybe find a career doing something else? He can't. He's Austin Forkner. The dude can't make more money somewhere else. He cannot make more money. He has to get back on that bike now and risk his life with a smoking hot wife and a kid on the way at home. How do you not cheer for that kid? You have to cheer for Austin Forkner. Now, personally, I mean, it's nothing against Ricky. It's nothing against Triumph. But just like a danger boy digs, it's our job. What's up, Walty? Full send, baby. Full send. It's our civic duty. We've all been there. 
you got to go through your hazing period. You got to put them through a hazing period. So Ricky and Triumph, you know, I think that it's not so much that I have anything against Ricky because I worked in the industry with the Ricky era. It's when you see the shameless kind of promotion that he he's taken place in and then how like Ralph and Jeff all of a sudden mysteriously get 86th from the broadcast booth. Even Daniel ba Blair couldn't survive the broadcast booth, who, booth, which who was no threat to Ricky at all. I could see Jet, Jeff was always a threat to Ricky, and then Ralph just, you know, just wrong place, wrong time. Daniel Blair, I'm not sure why that thing. I'm sure there's plenty of guys jump in the comments and let me know there. I've, I've known Daniel and been on his podcast a few times, um, but I've never asked or cared what caused that deal to go away for him. But the reality is this. Ricky, I just, I, it's not that I don't like Ricky. It's just you got to go through the hazing period, dude. You're the GOAT, the greatest of all time. You, you know, you have to go through your hazing period. And it's clear that the industry is all in on Ricky being in the booth because as great as he was as a racer, he's not as great as he was a racer as he is as an announce, announcer. Is he good? Yes. Is he great? No. He's not the greatest of all time. Ricky, you're not the GOAT when it comes to announcing in the booth. But this is a tricky one because like it's just like with Ken Roxon, Hellacious injury. Almost lost his arm. That thing was Frankenstein back together. And he came back out and won, and won a race. He didn't win a championship, but he won a race. The fact that he lined up again was great. The fact that he was competitive was even better. The fact that he won a race was outstanding. The fact that he did it on a bike that that's, hasn't had any any development for years and he had to kickstart the thing is phenomenal. So he has done his job. And so, and that's a Cinderella story. We've cut Kenny a ton of slack because for the fact is, of the matter is, and the industry knows this better than... Than any, if they sh if they don't, they should, and you're hearing it right now on the Walty Wanders MX show. The industry benefited from Kenny being out there because he's a big personality and he's a feel good story and he's a, he fits the mold. That's how I do it, Walty. I'm Kickstart Kenny Roxon. That they want him to fit in, and he's fine with if fitting into whatever mold he needs to fit into to make sure his agent can negotiate big fat contracts and the industry stays on his side. It's tough, man. It's tough out there because if you want to be yourself, you know, you're, you know, I mean, that's why a lot of these ex pros, everybody's seen the show. Everybody has seen the show because Walty's saying the things that everybody's thought, but nobody's got, had a chance to say it. Everybody knows that what I'm saying is pretty accurate in terms of the industry relationship that goes on between riders, teams, and sponsors. That's just the reality of the waters we're now swimming in. But I like this story because it's attached to Ricky and it's attached to Triumph. And, you know, the deal is, is uh, he's got a two-year deal with the third year, like uh, a 450, uh, 450 ride. Now, the thing with Austin, whether he stays on any team, I don't care where you put him. The dude's a phenomenal talent, but he's got the injury bug now. And once you've got the injury bug, it's hard to shake that bug even kickstart Kenny you know when his shock blew up and he got uh you know ejected off the bike he ended up injured again now luckily Kenny hasn't had that horrific injury and he's ready to he's putting he's not well I know we're giving Kenny a lot of you know a little bit of a hard time because he's he's not fast like he was and and that's okay I'm not sure how much of it's physical and how much of it's mental like after you go through those big injuries how much do you really want to risk and when the chosen one the moto messiah the wonder boy is cleaning up whether you're on even on your best day you can't keep up with them what's the point you go out there and you ride off into the sunset and you do your best this is the page that Austin Forkner has to take out of Kenny's book at this point dude you are in salvage mode Anybody, if Triumph's pinning their hopes on thinking Austin Forkner is going to win them a championship, and I'm sure when there's and his agent, as his, Austin's agent, I'm hey, Austin's fast. He's fast. He can do it. We we're training. We got new trainers. We got rid of Rhino. Yeah, he was a little too squirrely for Austin. We feel good about this. We we think we can bring uh, Triumph. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure they're painting that picture. I'm sure they're spinning that narrative. You have to. It's business. It's business. But what really do, do you think that's what's going to happen? It would be a long shot. A long shot, but would we all love it and be stoked about it? Of course. The dude's been through massive, massive injury. So we asked it on the Walty Wanders community page of the YouTube channel. 
What's the ch- will Austin make it through even one full season on Ricky's triumph? It's a good question. It's a big question. It's a question worth answering, uh, asking, and it, we're going to get the answer here, friends, this year. It's coming up. A1 is right around the door. I'm pretty sure he's, I don't know if he's racing West Coast or East Coast, probably East if he's smart, but we will see it this year at Supercross if he can much less get through a Supercross season much less an outdoors. So let's jump over, take a look at some polling, some results, and some some of the comments from you guys. Then we'll meet back here and wrap it up. Let's get started. All right, race fans, buckle up, strap in, roll up your windows, lock your doors. When asked on the Walty Wanderers community page of the YouTube channel, will Austin last a full season on Ricky's Triumph? 41% of you said, yep, it's going to be a miracle. He's going to do it. While 59% of you said, no way, Jose, that's asking way too much from the Austin. Well, let's go ahead and jump into some of the comments. First up to the starting gate, Matt Kakut comes in with, it's not even about the triumph. I think it's more about whether he can last a full season without hurting himself. Boom, and there it is there, the million dollar question. Let's keep going. Richard Brady pops the clutch with his open face and comes in with, I can only say a 50-50 chance. This is what he's proven to us. Maybe just race the track and not always full sin beyond his means. And there it is there, bro. Sometimes you got to slow down to go fast. Unless you're danger, boy. Boom. Let's see who's up next. Our boy G Nizik gets buck wild in the whoops and comes in with, you want to say yes, but all the data says no. But if he does and gets a couple of gate drops, I feel he's the only rider that really can put a fork into Deegan's dinner reservations. Boom, and there it is there. Danger board Deegs, you've been put on notice. Dat sick LML launches the triple and comes in with, let me give it to you, Walty, and give it to you raw, bro. If he bonks his head, he's out. I'm very surprised he's continuing his career. I know it's hard to hang it up when you feel you have so much more to go and prove, but at what expense and there it is there bro giving it to us and giving it to us straight shane cade crosses the finish line lights the candles gets the neck burn and says nothing against him he's super fast but made out of glass boom and there it is there make sure all you guys jump back into those comments bring your tear offs the roost tends to fly there's some barn burners going on in there as we speak in a bunch of bench racing now let's jump back to the studio so we can wrap this baby up all right friends welcome back and there you go thanks to everybody who participated like i said if you're new get your tear off throw in an open face jump in there and do some bench racing the roost tends to fly we're pulling no punches we're not sugarcoating it right do you want to be sugarcoated is that what you really want that's what the industry wants the industry wants to sugarcoat this and this is fine listen industry i love you man like i've made a lot of money in the industry i'm grateful for my time in the industry now i'm just fortunate enough that i don't need to rely on you guys anymore i can just I could, I'm a, I'll be a fan for life. If you've ever thrown a leg over a moto, you've risked your life. You know it's a brotherhood. You know you, you know what it's like. You, you just your moto for life. It doesn't matter about your age. We all our alter ego comes out when we get on the motorcycle. That's what's throughout, and that's why some of these uh, Wall Street execs they don't know what that's like. The people that run your sport don't know what it's like. They're just trying to spin narratives and advance the sport, whether it's electric bikes or playoffs or re- it doesn't matter. They're going to do whatever it takes. But this is a extreme sport and it'll always have that hurdle in front of it, even in a car racing, NASCAR, which is about the best they could hope for. Really, they could take this thing to They're in a roll cage. They've got way more protection around them. These guys are modern day gladiators. And Austin, nobody knows this better than Austin Forkner. He's got the scars to prove it. In final thoughts, I come to you as a friend, as a content creator, as a moto guy. Wants to see you not only win on the track, off the track. Understand the waters you're swimming in now. Shark infested Austin. Ricky, triumph. Welcome to the swimming pool. It's shark infested. A three-year deal. You got your checkbook out. To, to give Austin Forkner. And Austin, man, we are absolutely cheering for you. As we can see from the results, most people based on your track record are saying you're probably not going to be able, able to get one season done. 
much less three. We all want to be proved wrong, even if it comes at the expense of making Ricky and Triumph look like a hero. That's how much we love our, bro our brothers that throw a leg, leg over a moto. We, we really want to see you succeed. Austin, my advice, and I would never suggest anything that I'm not willing to do myself. Play it safe out there, dude. Just go, th just collect that three-year contract, even if it's top 10 finishes. If you're sniffing a podium, of course, go for it. But please, don't risk it all. Because Walty will be here to have to blow the lid off it every step of the way. Because it's not only what we need, it's in fact what we deserve. If you appreciate the content, I want to humbly ask you to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Social media link in the description of this video if you'd like to follow me there, or simply reach to Walty Wanders MX on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to love the next video, and there's an easy subscribe icon for your convenience. As always, thank you for your time. Don't go over the bars. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video.